cross, Hay again. Goes backwards before they move forward. One-on-one -on -one contest there. It's Clarence picking it up, top of the square. And Clarence in a fantastic position. Brody Speed plays on, goes around the body. And Speed makes no mistake and kicks the first one of today's clash. Doesn't have that much support on, so he's going to have to do it himself. Tashara, his mark was hindered with, but umpire sees it as a mark. Cunningham's going to drill it inside forward 50. Leading out there is Barwick. He's going to line up for goal number one for himself and his team. Sets himself up. Kick's going to go on its way. Barwick's going to get the first for North Hobart. Bricknell, who goes out wide. Volta turns around onto the left. Players up and in front. That was a fantastic mark by Barwick. He's causing some trouble up there. Played in front. Hands safely around the ball. You see just here. So Bricknell, hands out. To check numbers there, it may have been Volta, same sort of body shape. And Barwick plays in front, just worked his way in front of Hay. Just said, didn't have the height on him, but had the body position and moved in front. He goes back looking for his second. And that is straight through the middle. And North Hobart take the lead. He's always at the bottom of the pack. Looks 25 metres out, strong lead. You send in a strong mark. Joy Millwood, basketball hands. I don't know if he's a basketballer. We'll, make, we'll say that he is, though. Let's have a look at this approach. Moves in. He's probably 35 out. It's quite close to the man on the mark. Lays back and makes no mistake of it. Clarence kicked the first of the next quarter. It's a nice approach. Goes around the left foot. He's tugged that one across, but there is a nice mark taken again. What are they going to do about Jai Millwood? Opportunity to kick his third for the night. He's Jai Millwood. 15 out. 45 degree angle, makes no mistake, and Clarence surged further, further ahead. Or a few options will form a pack, and what a mark taken there from Philpot. Heavily there, again in and under is Winch, gets the hair passed away, speeds lurking, left foot kick speeds, and Millwood, that man, he's going to line up for four. Mark back here, top of the Can't get possession there is Marriott, and again we'll see a quick hand pass out there from Bounds. Drilling kick inside forward 50. Two on two here. Speed's going to get to the back of it. The speed is going to dribble one forward. Millwood and Speed has been outstanding to start this quarter. Hay with a nice tap through the middle. So North Hobart need to try and pull back the bit of a, a bit of the ascendancy just here in Volta. He's going to do it all by himself. He's goes from 35 out directly in front and puts that one through for North Hobart. That was much needed. Volta. Anthony Volta took them on. Goes around one, goes around two. There he is in the middle just there, so does the work early. Taps it to himself. Little short kick. Pretty much the only person that touched the ball in play just then was Anthony Volta by. That was an outstanding piece of play. Yeah, it certainly was. The bottom of the pack, but Hay clears him. Moves the ball forward, nicely picked up just then. I believe McMullen gets the hands off. An incorrect disposal. He looked to get the hands out just there, but I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, I thought so as well. Yeah, he did. That's uh, unfortunate for North Hobart. And more unfortunate is a little bit of undisciplined play just then that leads to a 50 metre penalty given and an easy goal just here from Watkins, who's just going to march in. They don't even bother putting anyone on the mark. It goes long and finds Full Sang off the chest of Full Sang, though. Ball moves forward by Clarence. Devine attacking the ball hard. Player 43 with a nice pick up, and that was Winch. And a nice one handed mark akin by this man, Speed. Back here. Dual act up forward. Speed has been outstanding in this quarter. Clear out, boys. North over. Clear. Straight out. Nice, nice vision there. Sorry for Jotty Winch. Absolutely. Beautiful pick up. Nice vision. And Speed makes no mistake of that one. Sells the candy. It was Cunningham who started all off, I should say. Inside forward, 50 kick. Nice mark taken there. I think it was from Phil Pot. It wasn't. It was actually Jasper Hay. From Hay. McMullen again. Ball ripped off him. Nice bit of work just in by Cunningham at the bottom of the plaque. Umpires pick one out just in. I think it'll be a North Hobart free kick. 
A nice reward, reward for continued effort just then. This is Tashara. He's probably on a 45 degree angle. Looks for hands off. He sees Volta. He's kicked one from there already today and he puts this one through. Post height. Goal for Anthony Volta. I like the way the players are thinking about how they're putting a player down to the ground. Just then Fitzgerald. They eased him down to the ground. Doing a good job in the ruck there. Player number 42 for Clarence. Goes forward and it's Hay. Hay with a nice kick in Millwood's direction. Hands up. The big jukes go up and Millwood takes the mark. Hines been outstanding. Not the work. A nice mark just then. He's incorrectly disposed of. The ball goes back inside 50 for Clarence. The clock has resumed. Oh, and it is an absolute fly from Millwood. The dying stages of this under 16.5 season. It's going to be the Clarence Roos leaping into Premiership glory. 52 point winners against North Hobart. 12-12-84 to 5-2-32 thanks to the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard. A convincing effort. Gallon in defeat North Hobart. The Clarence Ultimately lifting up this cup, all thanks to a dominant second quarter, Jace. I think that's where the damage was done, wasn't it? Moving into that second quarter at the start of the third. That was a fantastic win from Clarence. They were the better team all day. North Hobart stuck with them. A couple of goals late in that first quarter to put them back in contention. But I think the forward entries in that first quarter probably should have had Clarence further in front. The more opportunities they got, the further in front they moved. Probably quite inaccurate at the end there for Clarence. 12-12 doesn't look that bad, but I think some of those behinds were probably fairly kickable for Clarence. But you can't complain when you win a grand final by 52 points. And that was an excellent team effort by Clarence.